Hey everybody, this is Praxis, and I just figured it out. It's all right here. One of the big problems that we've had at our place since we moved in is our hot water situation. We were kind of forced into a solution that the government was uh, kind of mandating for various reasons. We, we ended up having to put in a solar hot water system. If you want to hear my full, uh, very negative thoughts on that, here's a link to that video here where I kind of talk about why that system is a problem. It works great during certain times, but other times it doesn't work really well. It's always been kind of an issue, especially in the winter. In fact, that's when it's an issue. It's an issue in the winter. So I've been trying to think like, how could I get the heat where we have a lot of heat in the winter, which is around our wood stove. We got plenty of heat around our wood stove and get that heat into the hot water. There are lots of different approaches that people have used for you know, solving that problem. And some of them result in people's plumbing exploding. And the reason for that is because you have pressurized lines and li the pressurized lines are you know, oftentimes created into some kind of like a, a, uh, radiator uh, type uh, sort of uh, situation, except instead of radiating heat, it's there to absorb heat. Uh, and if it absorbs too much heat, the water starts boiling, boiling water expands and you know blows pipes apart. So I've been trying to think of an approach that I could use to capture the heat from my wood stove without having any kind of that sort of danger. Something that is simple and elegant and safe. And I came up with it and I wanna share it with you in this video. I love the chase and the hunt and I set the pace when I'm running I always take what I want and I always give it 100 Don't need a bank, no I'm funded Play the game like it's nothing I'm always thankful for something Don't take for granted, stay humble Now waiting, better believe in your mind Cause it's everything You can mold, shape, find almost anything Okay, so here we go. Welcome to my channel. Uh, here I talk about homesteading, home building, emergency preparedness, and a bunch of things that people generally find uh, very uninteresting. And in this uh, video, I want to talk about this system which I have created. Now, this is what I have pre-existing. I have a electric water heater tank, and we do have solar hot water panels which uh, can feed heat into here. But our issue is that when it's a cloudy day, especially in the winter when we have lot really short days, we don't tend to get any heat off of our solar hot water panels. And we're doing pretty much entire electric water heating all the time. We have solar panels on the roof, but we have trouble keeping up with it because uh, the heating element in this water heater is a 5,000 watt uh, heating element. We only have 6,000 watts of panels. I say only, but you know, when that, heating element turns on, you better have all those panels in full sun or you're going to start running out of power. And when you have days when there's a little bit of clouds, that's exactly what's happening. We're not getting enough heat into here. So I've been trying to think of a way of getting the heat from our wood stove. Now, if you run the pressurized hot water lines uh, directly to the wood stove, into that kind of radiator that a lot of people use, uh, and then you run them back to the, the uh, you know, your domestic water use, that can work except that if you don't circulate the uh, water fast enough and it starts boiling and building up pressure, you can blow up your pipes. So I wanted to do something that would be an absolute fail safe. And this is what I've come up with. And I think this is actually a pretty good idea, especially considering who came up with it. <laughs> so uh, here's our cold water coming in. This comes from the well. Here's our hot water going out. At the moment, what we have is just a cold water line that goes straight into the electric water heater and then a hot water line that comes out of it. There's a little mixer valve in the middle and stuff like that, but you know, we're just gonna ignore that for simplicity. We've got cold water coming in, hot water going out. And what I wanna add is this entire separate tank. And that is this tank that you see right here, this little uh, green one, I made it in green plastic. So the idea is what I wanna do is get one of those, uh, those big like, what are they like, 55 gallon drums or, or huge uh, plastic uh, barrels. And I wanna take one of those and put a few bulkheads in it, uh, a four to be exact. And what we're gonna do is fill that up with some kind of a liquid. Probably it's gonna be water, uh, although I wanna think about the idea of maybe using uh, you know, water with things added into it. I, I, I think it, I've uh, read before that you know, if water has salt in it, it can store more thermal energy. I don't know if that's true or not, but I'm gonna do some research into that. But we're gonna have some kind of a material in here. Obviously, if we turn that into salt water, and make it cor corrosive problems. So, you know, that would be something we'd have to figure out as well. But we're gonna have some kind of a fluid in here. I mean, heck, it could, it could be urine. We could fill the whole thing with urine. Um, and that fluid is going to move through a uh, tube that's gonna come out of the bottom of this barrel. And this barrel, this yellow all around the outside, it's not just a poofy cloud, that's insulation. Uh, the water is gonna come out of there. I'm call, I'll call it water and fluid, fluid interchangeably. It's probably gonna be uh, water. And then it's going to move into a, kind of a reverse radiator that's gonna be uh, right up next to uh, our wood stove on the backside. 
Our wood stove has a lot of real estate on the back where we could put something and it wouldn't be too, too ugly. Cause you know, you don't want to make your house look ugly either. And if you can get the same thing done and have it look elegant versus uh, have it look like a, like a crap show, why not have it look elegant? So we're going to try to uh, get this kind of reverse radiator that's going to be absorbing heat uh, behind the wood stove. There's going to be a lot of pipes in there uh, and they're all going to be generally uh, moving in a vertical direction. Uh, my hope is that we're going to be able to just get this flowing with convection. So cool water kind of enters on the bottom, gets warmed up, rises, and then gets re-entered uh, into the barrel on the top. And I'm hoping that we can get that to be a convective cycle. Now, if we're going to have to put a pump in there, I think we would be putting it right down here at the bottom. And when we rig this thing up, I'm going to uh, put some valves around here. So if we do decide to put a pump in here, we don't have to drain the whole barrel or anything like that. We'll get, we'll get some, some valves so we can shut things off and, uh, and put a pump at that location. Uh, to get the water circulating. And that pump might uh, be run off of some sort of a thermal uh, sensor. So it would sense when this area over here gets warm and when it gets warm, it could, uh, it, it could turn itself on. Ideally, you could have it kind of be a comparative thermal sensor where if this is warmer than that, then you know, turn this radiator, uh, or reverse radiator on and uh, start uh, capturing some of that heat. So that's the first part of it, is we've got the wood stove, we've got this reverse radiator that's absorbing heat, we've got kind of a convective uh, circle going on here, which we could um, uh, help along with a possible pump location right here, and that fills this large uh, plastic drum with uh, you know, warm fluid of some sort. The plastic drum is insulated and it does have a vent on the top. And that's really important because if you ever had boiling going on in here, you would need to make sure that, you know, that pressure could be relieved. Uh, we wanna make sure that we're not uh, uh, capturing any bubbles up in here. This has to be like a nice uh, smooth run. So any uh, you know, boiling off bubbles would uh, find their way back through there. We don't wanna have any dry spaces in here either. So we do have to make sure that this is gonna be a nice uh, smooth run. That's not gonna get uh, choked up with bubbles. And we will have a vent on here, so if it ever uh, did start boiling or something like that, a couple different things. You know, my boy was looking at this and he was saying, well, hey, well, that could be like our, our tea kettle that we keep on the wood stove. It's got a, one of those uh, little whistling uh, attachments on the top. Maybe we could put a little whistle on the top there. Or I was thinking we could even uh, wrap a balloon over that and uh, the balloon would start inflating if it filled with steam and uh, then it would pop and a popping balloon is probably something that would catch your attention. And even after it popped, you'd have those little uh, flaps of uh, uh, balloon material around it and it would make kind of like a farting noise after, after that. So you'd hear an explosion and then a fart and you'd be like, oh, the, it's the explosion and then the fart. That means that we're, you know, we're boiling off. Uh, so that would be kind of like our, our alarm. But honestly, uh, it wouldn't really matter because you just boil off all the water into your house and it would ne it's, nothing would ever explode because you don't have any kind of a confined uh, you know, pressure uh, system um, going on where you're going to build up uh, that much uh, heat where a, a pressurized line is going to explode. So that's this part of the system. And this is completely uh, separate uh, in terms of uh, you know, any fluid transfer between this and this system. The only way that these uh, guys connect is that this one is going to have a, uh, a pipe run that's going to have a bunch of coils. I, I, I illustrated a few little coils here, but there'll be a bunch of coils uh, in this area uh, that will uh, be picking up the heat from here uh, when we are pumping around. Now, I've got a special diagram of this right here that we're going to be popping over to in just a, a little bit. But the basic idea is that we are going to heat up this uh, container here and store that heat energy and then we're going to steal it and use it for our electric water uh, heater. But let's back up for a second and assume none of this even exists. What if we didn't even care about the electric water heater? What if we didn't care about heating water? This in and of itself, without any of this over here, this is actually a useful device, you know, just in and of itself because if you are heating your house with a wood stove uh, and you want to try to um, moderate the temperature swings. Because when uh, you run a wood stove, oftentimes it gets pretty hot in your house when you're running the wood stove and then the wood stove uh, will, uh, you know, you, you'll stop burning it and then the house can cool off a, li a little bit or, or, or quite a bit. Having something like this, a big thermal mass where we are capturing a bunch of that heat, this, you know, there's insulation around here, but that's not going to be a 100% perfect insulation. This is going to be losing heat out to the outside environment. This is heat that largely would have been going into the environment anyway uh, from the wood stove. So it's not like we're going to be like overheating ourselves, but what we're going to be doing is capturing the heat and then doing slow release. So even if you didn't care about heating water, this is a, another way of trying to moderate 
uh, the temperature in your house. So it's not super hot when you run the fire and then super cold when the fire goes out. At our house, we have other ways of doing that. Uh, we've got uh, air vents that kind of take the hot air from the top and then blow it down underneath the floor and things. So our, our house is actually pretty stable in that regard anyway. But if it wasn't, this alone would be helpful uh, for that. So this is a project worth doing even without everything else I'm about to describe but let's go on to everything else I'm about to describe. So the idea here is obviously we're storing heat in here and then we want to be uh, pumping that heat into our, our hot water heater. Now there's a couple different ways that we can do that and I'm gonna switch over to my next slide in my PowerPoint presentation here. This right here is essentially just this area above the hot water, uh, uh, I'm sorry, above the electric water heater. So we've got our, our cold water coming in here, we've got our hot water going out, cold water goes into the water heater down at the bottom, uh, the hot water comes out of it, and we've got these little branches. All these V's are valves, and uh, we've got one P right here. This is a, a pump that I'm, I'm toying with the idea of adding a pump in here as well, and I'll, I'll describe why in a little bit. So the idea is presently cold water just goes in straight into the hot water heater and it gets heated, uh, well, it mixes with the water that's in there and it, you know, it will generally get warmed up. And then the hot water, the hottest stuff in the top uh, leaves. What this is instantly gonna do by adding all this stuff and, and going into this warm tank, the cold water doesn't go directly into the hot water heater anymore. The cold water takes a detour because this valve will be closed, takes a detour goes in this direction uh, and goes into that hot water bath where we're uh, saving a lot of hot water. And after it gets warmed up to some degree, and we're gonna be playing with this and see how the system works, you know, and how it works will depend on how we might play with some of these valves and change things around in the future. One of the ideas about having lots of valves is that we're gonna make it so that you can flip things around and uh, try uh, different approaches to this. But anyway, the initial setup is cold water comes in, leaves, goes into the hot water bath, comes back to some degree warmed up, maybe very warm, you know, we'll find out, and then that warmer water or very warm water or hot water, uh, depending on how well the system works, is gonna go into the hot water, uh, the electric hot water heater tank. And because it's going in already uh, preheated, there's gonna be a lot less need for running electric heat to heat that stuff up because you're not dumping cold water in there, you're dumping water that's already uh, heated up somewhat. Uh, and then, you know, that, that hot water comes out. So there's a couple other valves and things that we've got going on in here. And uh, one, one setup, I, I'm, uh, there's two different setups here. Um, okay, let's talk, let's talk about this one first. Um, the, I mentioned I have this pump idea here. This is a different idea that I had. Let's say that, uh, let's say that this, this system here, this doesn't just work well, this works really well and you get a lot of heat in this thing. This thing really be, builds up a lot of heat, not just enough to like kind of preheat your water and make it not so cold when it's going in the electric water uh, heater tank. This thing works really, really well, and you want to be able to capture a lot of that stuff. If that's the case, what we could do is we could uh, close this valve and have this valve closed and have the cold water come in and then go into the preheat tank and get very warm and comes back over here, goes into the hot water heater tank, and then if we run this pump, this pump could be hooked up to some kind of a thermal uh, sensor that is, that is in this tank, and it, it, at some point, if this tank becomes hotter than this tank, then this pump here could kick on, and this would start cycling the water through. So you're grabbing the heat from that kind of uh, warm water bath tank, and pulling it into the uh, the electric uh, uh, into the electric uh, hot water heater tank. Now, again, this would be you would only use this if the temperature in here begins to exceed the temperature in here. And you know, we could work with some uh, kind of programming, uh, like get, get a little uh, comparative kind of electronic device that would you know kind of sample between the two. And you know, if this is hotter than there, it'll it'll flip this thing on and you can start cycling. Anyway, this is something we could just play with. This is not something I'd be using right from the beginning. We've got a valve here, so we can shut that, that all off to be obviously a, like a check valve on this side so the cold water isn't kind of pumping back and going uh, over into that side. But this is something we could play with. So one, one way of setting this up is cold water comes in here while we are using a shower and it is, because uh, this, this is about like taking showers and things. So this would only be cycling when people are actually using hot water. So 
uh, cold water comes in, gets preheated, and then the water that is going into the hot water tank to replace what's being used for a shower or washing dishes or whatever isn't quite as cold. That's version one of how this works. Version two is if that hot water bath is really hot, hotter than that electric water tank, we could potentially have a pump here that could start some circulation and you could capture even more of that heat in the tank. Those are two different setups for how this could work. Now there's a third setup for how this could work and this is the one that I think I'm even the most excited about because this is a lot of versatility that's built into this, uh, this right here. This is one, uh, a way that this could work if the electric water heater tank isn't even here. Let's say this is broken. Let's say something happens, you know, and, and I can't replace this. Or let's say I, I get fed up with this and I want to replace this with something else. And, you know, when you're replacing a hot water heater tank, it's the kind of thing where it's like you want to have that thing removed and replaced the same day so that, you know, your house actually has warm water. This setup here would make it so that wouldn't be that big of a deal. We can completely eliminate the hot water tank from the system, and the system can still work just based on this, at least to some degree. And we could play with it over time and find out to what degree it is. If we close this valve, and we close this valve, and this valve is closed, but we open this valve right here, what that would do is cold water comes in, preheats in our tank, leaves, bypasses the hot water uh, heater tank over here, and then goes right out for domestic use. And, the, and this valve would be, in this case, would be closed as well. So what we're doing is we're only heating the water with our, our wood stove heater and using that for domestic use. Now, if the wood stove heater is not particularly effective, I, well, you know, I, I don't think it's ever gonna be not particularly effective, but let's just say that this, this wood stove heater, it takes the water from like 50 degrees. You know, when water comes out of the ground, it's like 50 degrees. Let's say this, this heater just takes it from there to like, uh, you know, like a swimming pool or something like that, like 80 degree water or something like that. You know, you jump into a swimming pool and it's 80 degree water. That's 30 degrees higher than 50 degree water. You try to swim in 50 degree water and that's really, that's really cold. 80 degrees, that, that can be comfortable. Let's just say that this only gets us to 80 degrees. If you're gonna take a shower, would you rather take a shower if you didn't have an electric water heater? Would you rather take it with 50 degree water or 80 degree water? Now I think 80 degree water, and we're talking Fahrenheit here, <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, I think 80 degree Fahrenheit water, uh, you know, that's, that's plausible. Uh, uh, for, for taking a shower, and I think 80 degree water, that is probably a, a low ball of what this thing it would be capable of creating. Because I know you put kettles on the top of the wood stove, it heats up really, really fast. I think we're gonna do a lot better than 80 degrees, but even if that's the, the minimum that you got, that's functional. You know, that's functional where if this thing wasn't working for some reason or you want to get rid of it, you could take showers and do it with like essentially pool water. I think we could do a lot better than that. I think we're, we'd be well above the 100 uh, degree mark or, or at least, you know, like 90, you know, I'm speculating at this point, but you could definitely take comfortable showers even if none of this existed and it was just cold water in, uh, preheating a bit and then going right out for domestic use. So this is the plan that we're gonna be trying to implement. I'm excited about this. Uh, the idea of our, our electric uh, hot water heater uh, being kind of an issue for a while has been vexing me because it bothers me that we have a solar hot water system that, you know, it, it only works when you really have full, full sun. And whenever I have full, full sun, I get plenty of electricity to heat the water with anyway. So I never really even needed the solar hot water panels because the only time the solar hot water panels work is on days when I didn't really need them because there's plenty of sun, so I, I had plenty of electricity that day anyway. And what this is gonna do is it's gonna make it so that the electricity that we do have is gonna be much more adequate for doing what we need because we won't need nearly as much electricity to heat the water because we're gonna be stealing water from there. And I love the fact that even if this whole system went down, we could still have a reasonably comfortable situation for taking showers. That's it, I hope you find this interesting. Uh, and if you did, uh, stay tuned on this channel. I'm gonna continue releasing videos as I do this. I am doing this project. You know, sometimes I think about a project and uh, you know, it just kind of sits on the shelf for a while. And in fact, I've got lots of drawings like this of other projects that I don't share with you guys because they're kind of like, ah, maybe someday I'll do it. And uh, you know, if I ever do it someday, that'll be when I share it. This is happening because it has to happen because this isn't working and this is a beautifully elegant solution that is safe and fairly inexpensive. I mean, all we're talking about here is that we're adding a few valves. We're get, you know, got a little bit more um, piping. This is just gonna be PEX uh, piping going from there to there. 
get, you know, a little bit of copper here and there. This is, oh, I, you know, well under a thousand dollars for this thing. And we're going to have like a bulletproof heating uh, situation that is not only going to take stress off this, but also be an emergency backup in case this ever uh, completely goes down. That's it. Thanks for watching. Hey YouTube preppers, if you enjoyed this video, here's another one that I think you might like. But before you click on it, I wanted to take a moment to thank all the people on the right hand side of your screen. They help to support all the work that I do here over at Patreon.com. If you'd like to join them and get your name added to the list, the link's below.